air spell. I was there. Oh, yeah, totally. Everybody remembers that good old time. Look at that beautiful photo, though. Doesn't it just look oh, cool? What a great matchup. Just look great at that. Photo. Bucks Rams, man. I got to say. Jersey matchup. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Denver Sports Podcast. Go for it. Why not? Yeah, give us something. Give us like an eagle or something, Spencer. What, do you have? what are you, like a golf swing? Whack. Yeah, I I do ha I don't know how to do that with uh, my mouth. <laughs> Whack. Um, just a club, g generally speaking. You but just at least give me a like a oh, golf, yeah, right. you know, a little, little golf, golf clap, clap intro. Yeah. Um, guys, we have a great show for you today. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a spicy one. This one, we lined up a spicy panel. It was a spicy weekend in Colorado sports. I'm going to go ahead and get in front of this. I'm going to say we have a lot of people in Buffs Nation. Shout to y'all. We like you guys. Big you Nation. You might not like this show as much because we're going to be, what I think is going to be giving a casual or outside perspective on this Rocky Mountain Showdown, which I thought was exquisite, an incredible game. We're going to be talking about that, but not everything's going to be like sunshine and rainbows with it. We have some critiques both sides. We're going to talk about the Broncos. Is their season over? Are they a losing organization? Which is weird to say. And then we're going to talk about Philadelphia. We just launched PHLY. Great sports town. What did we learn while we were out there? You were out there, right, Spence? Yeah, it's uh, no matter, like, <laughs> they talked about one of their worst teams right now, which is one of the worst in the major four, which is by far and away the Flyers. Yeah. And I was talking to Vince, and and he was like, that diehard fan base oh, that yeah. will sell out to take Die over in, hard. in like they're not week. leaving yeah like they're yeah so he's um and it's cool when you have that yep. as, a, as a sports city to get all the major four and have uh, a great fan base throughout the whole thing and i'm gonna pitch something that they have in philly that i want to try it's gonna become my new mission to bring this to colorado the four for four so we're gonna talk about all of those things I'll introduce the panel, though. Big Drive Spence, he runs our events here at All City, not just DNVR, but also all of our other networks. He also is a golf pro. He taught me everything I know about golf, which isn't much, but he did teach me pretty quickly. Adam's got the golf bug now, and it's right. as a golf pro or a person that's been golfing a long time, I get a thrill out of you like texting me and getting yeah. excited about golf like that I, excites me dude i'll text him like four beers in after like <laughs> uh, like like just made a bar dude i will <laughs> so it won't great. even be like that it's cool so awesome. of a moment i'll be like dude i just cranked it like 180 <laughs> like not even that far and uh, he'll be like hell hell yeah dude you did it so shouts to big dry spence appreciate uh, that over there my second show in a row brendan vote the mustache man man this is fun I, I always like doing other shows tapping into other audiences we already have a buffs fan who thought this was the buff show hardcore oh, not the buff show he's gonna so hate you're gonna show. hop to the other one um by the way if you doesn't it look like vote started getting dressed from the top down and got bored <laughs> just like quit yeah he just like ran out of steam Holy shit. <laughs> he just made, well, that's so true no he just put a shirt on and then he said well this hat fits today so yeah. that's the first one i grabbed and then then shorts and, and then the, like, yeah whatever. i from my angle i almost looks like he doesn't have any shorts on <laughs> it just looks like just leg the Man, mind can wonder I, I like it it's uh it's colorado you know what i mean you get the if you get the fall up top summer forever down low <laughs> yeah. you know yeah all right we're gonna set this the tone here Rocky Mountain Showdown was this weekend. CU Buffs, CSU Rams. People don't realize this, but the state of Colorado, it really is pretty close to 50-50 in my experience, Buffs Rams. Like in Colorado locally, but the Buffs are the bigger national brand because they're in the Pac-12 and they've been in the Big 12 and this or that. But the two schools have a lot of students and a lot of alumni that are in Colorado. So I feel like it is pretty closely split in terms of people I know that like Buffs that like and like Rams. They're very, two very, very common schools. I didn't go to either one. I have no allegiance here. I went to a school that had an academic standard, so I, I did not go to these two schools. So I just had to get my little yes. jab in. Had to get a little jab in. Yes. Um, but I didn't go to CU or CSU, so I don't have a dog in the fight. Right. Spence, what is your perspective on these two? Before we get into the game, just where's your allegiance? Well, so I don't have one either. I technically, I went to UCCS, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Didn't have a football team, so I consider myself a CU adjacent, but... Uh, my grandpa and dad grew up, both went to Iowa, and I've been a diehard Iowa fan my whole life and never wavered, yeah. which is kind of the whole the, idea the of the show. The lamest thing like about you, you, but I'm not trying to make fun of your grandpa, yeah, you, but it was, that no, part yeah. was cute. But I mean, I will. I mean, my, yeah. my dad played, or my grandpa played center in the 1930s at 6'1 wow. in, on the basketball team. That's awesome. So, 6 -1, yeah, 6'1, yeah. and just he's that. not like, it's crazy. <laughs> That's it's just basically a tiny king. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh, impressive. Yeah. Exactly. So my allegiance uh, lies with neither team. Um... It was a great game, obviously, but I I always root for the underdog. And to okay. be honest, like, uh, you know, the, the CU fans that are still in this, uh, you know, shout out to you. But the 
just the the pompous ass. You're diving arrogance. right in. You gotta, you, I gotta, I gotta slow you down. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to establish a baseline of we're not biased on this. Like, vote. Do you have a bias towards C or CSU? No, I do not. You, I'm. You're from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. So like, I want Colorado to win, uh -huh. right? So, as CU was opening the season and with all that hype. I'm all about it. Right. As they enter a matchup with another Colorado school, yeah. I default to my instincts. Oh. I, like you, I always root for underdogs. Okay, so that's part of it. I didn't yeah. that, I just wanted to establish that, but go back to it. So I honestly that I think CU fans tend to forget, which I would too, that they were the worst division one college football team in the country last year. I don't actually I, and but that's what I, I feel I feel the forgetness of it. I feel like in, <laughs> instead of like, hey, we were here and now it's so great uh to be where we are now, like it's like, oh, we're the best. Right. We're we're just the absolute best. Like that it sports is like that, it comes and goes, but remember where you came from. I think that's my biggest my biggest take on there, you know, the the CU fans like RK. And like Harrison, yeah. the guys that were there last year, the one and eleven buffs showing up to games, those people I'm extremely happy for. Right. But the people that all of a sudden are, you know, and even Dion fans, and I like Dion. That's the crazy thing, is like I like Dion, but what Dion has turned CU casuals into has made me not like the team. So I, to me, I love a bandwagon. So for me, I, I have no problem with it. Like this is sports. I don't think everybody needs to take every sport as seriously as the most serious of fans. So for me, I have a leeway there. And like you, love Coach Prime. Totally prime pilled. F first couple weeks of the season, even in the lead up to it, I'm not just watching the game. Like that first game is really what got me because I was excited. You know, our guys are excited. They get me excited. RK and and Jake and Neely. And like all this stuff, I'm getting pumped up as the season goes on, but there's this undertone of like, I'm afraid it's going to blow up in all of our faces and they're not going to be actually good. Yeah. Then they beat TCU. And I'm telling you guys, I was fully buffs pilled. I'm watching every well off video. I'm watching every presser from Coach Prime. I'm watching every behind the scenes video I can get. I can't get enough Coach Prime. So for me, I'm one of these casuals that jumped on, on board and, I, and I'm with it. But there is this undertone of see you fan base the core fan base to me has always been a little bit of a pompous fan base that didn't have they had the like 90s and it's carried them for 30 years since then to where they're like smug about a thing that hasn't been good for so long so i understand that sentiment even if like i was like f it i don't care i love prime i'm in on prime yeah i i i would say that that's why everyone is so excited right you they know that they're one in 11 i get that uh, I do think particularly through the lens of how it, they're juxtaposed with CSU, for a long time there were a lot of pot shots of like, oh, our little brother, when, it's like, yeah, I mean, that's the game on the schedule, you might win this year. Right. And I just always felt like, you know, there's a, they're, they were very quick to establish themselves as a different program from CSU, while in the meantime they were losing a lot of games. So I'm always sympathetic to the underdog, but in this cultural clash in Colorado, not cultural, fan base clash, I I find myself particularly sympathetic to Rams fans sometimes. Here's what I'll here's where I think I officially land on everything now that the dust has settled. I am all in on the buffs. I'm all in on Coach Prime. I'm all in on this era. And it is so much better for all of us as sports fans if the buffs ride this wave and just keep riding it for years and years and they become a first class team like right now the hype is there well I, i'm still not quite sure how good they are but the hype is there and the excitement is there and just look at all the people i will say i do feel like the showdown almost felt like a necessary humbling in in some ways for me where i was like yes this team has to also be a blue collar team they also have to like earn it every step of the way and to me that's what this one was so my big takeaway from this game was one my, actually here's my big takeaway csu doesn't get the shine probably that they deserved coming into this one and see you. I think probably digged a little bit into that. Like Jay Norvell had a really dumb comment, his hats and sunglasses comment, dorky, lame, almost felt a little like cringy. Like everything about it was really, really lame. The bus made it personal. They started clapping back fights on the, everything like this. You think, okay, here's a good old fashioned dog fight. I thought CSU brought the dog fight and see did not for most of that game. I mean, yeah, the, the Norvell outcoached Prime the entire game. Prime had the better talent. That showed out in the end. Shadur Sanders is an extremely talented player. You know, they lost Travis Hunter, which still, they they overcame that. But no, Jay Norvell outcoached Prime in this game. He had he had a 
fifty percent as good roster, and they won the game until the last minute by some awesome passes, by the way, from Shadour. Like they, the clutch factor for for the Buffs was actually really dope. They really came in clutch, but they looked like t- they looked like crap until the last couple of minutes of the game. Honestly, um, I I thought there was a matchup like CSU. It was a good matchup for CSU. Their skill players are talented. Their wide receivers are always talented. And they clearly found a way that they were able to, right off the bat, find success against the Buffs. Uh, But to me, I actually loved that. I think when you get in front of the media for a week and you say, it's personal now, it's also personal for the other side. They clearly, in in silence, because nothing makes its way outside of Fort Collins, but they clearly were just sitting there going like, we're supposed to just sit here. We know this is Nuggets fans. Like Nuggets fans are kind of like, feel like CSU. You know, where you feel like you're always overlooked. The narrative's never about you. Oh, it's the Lakers, everything, Lakers, Lakers. So, like, you sit there the whole time, and you're just like, you're not even going to mention the Yogi. You're not even mention this. So That's this how is, they, they came I'm out. I'm really glad you brought this up. My connection to Colorado sports is through the Nuggets and through this ultimate no-coast bias. Everyone looks past you guys, doesn't talk about you guys. And it's awesome that people are talking about CU, but in this matchup for a week, there was a very intense Lakerfication of the Buffs. Yeah. And every national outlet had to be there for that game, but no one was there because of CSU. Right. And then guess what? At the half, it's a game. And we're watching this game because of we still don't know who's going to win it. Uh, so I do think, for me, there was a very intense Lakerfication of it very fast. I don't mind that week to week in a vacuum. It's awesome that the eyes are on Colorado. But I did feel a, a Nuggets brand of defensive towards the Rams fans. I think at one point, Dion was even asked, before the game started, when you beat them, what are you going to say at, yeah. at midfield? Yeah. And I just felt, I was not surprised to see Colorado State walk in there and say, like, we're taking this personally too. Right. I think that's I think that's to be expected. It, let me just say real quick, because I see some people confused. Guys, this is not the Buff Show. We have a Buff Show. It's Jake and RK and, and Uncle Neely, and they do a great job. This isn't that. That show is tailored, tailored to people that want to hear about the Buffs and from a Buffs perspective. We're giving a we I put this in the description of the show. It's like a casual's perspective. We st- open the show by saying we don't have a rooting interest here, but I do think it's important even for the prime fans who have come over to DNVR and been following the Buffs to understand an important dynamic that is here in Colorado between these two teams. That, to be honest, was kind of weird to watch play out in real time this this week. Again, we're all like I said, prime pilled. We're all excited for I, it, I'm but there were elements CU. of it this weekend that just felt a little like I don't know, man, like. Th- that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is CSU is also Colorado. That's my point. And there that's was a weirdness point. to them becoming the evil guys and, and the, the you know whatever. And it's like, hey man, those boys came and showed up and took this game seriously and did a lot of impressive things. And that was my big takeaway. Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely like I. If you a- asked me right before the game, I mean, I I had CU minus 23 points. I thought there was no way this game was going to be close with how CSU. Um, had looked against, I mean, Washington State's better than people give them credit for, but, um, you know, CSU brought the fight. They were they were the aggressive team. They made plays. They, you know, had a good game plan, and, and they almost came out with the win. And, and it's, you know, like, once again, I'll just reiterate what he said. This is the DNVR Sports Podcast. This is not a buff show. All right, so everybody that's like, hey, you know, buff show here, but like, this is not the buff show. I'll say it slowly for you. This is not the buff show. Right. Hopefully everybody gets that. But the, the the game, it was a great game, and it was great for the rivalry. It was great for the state of Colorado. It was on ESPN. You know, it sucks that it was late, um, that, like, you know, it was 10 p.m. start for the East Coast people that want to watch this game because that was, I mean, that was the game of the day. Yeah. And, and it was great that and it was, CSU and it made lived it up a to game. The hype, exactly. It like lived up to the hype of the game. Um, and that's one of my other big takeaways here is that if you talk to some CU fans, they feel like the Rocky Mountain Showdown is beneath them. That's kind And of, as yeah. Coach Prime has gotten here, there might be a point in the very near future where that's the case. Where, I mean, our, our hope with Coach Prime is that he elevates the buffs into a different stratosphere than what the buffs, Rams, Robert Which, by the way, he has already done. Which he's already done. And, yeah. And it bled into CSU in a good way. Brought attention to them, yeah. Prime, just to placate you guys a little bit, brought attention to the Rocky Mountain Showdown, and both sides delivered. Yeah. They put that game in prime time on a Saturday. After an SEC game, it was the most watched game of the day. Everyone was waiting for that other game to get off their TV. And both of these teams delivered 
good football. Not just now it got dirty and contentious and I get it. No. But I'm saying like that was quality football on a high level and it was by far the most watched game of the day. So it was really cool to see Colorado win on that stage. What was fun for me was the reminder that both of these sides are Colorado. And I thought it was really cool to see the decided underdog really show up and bring some juice to that game. People loved watching that all around the country. And some people tuned in to see a Buffs blowout, but part of the reason why people loved that game was because CSU made it competitive from the jump. And that's the thing about this is, you guys know it's like, this is really true of football, but it's true of all sports where you'll have a rival and one of them is down a little than the other, or the other one is just up, right? That's that's the dynamic here, but it's like, yeah, but it's a rivalry game, so all bets are off. It doesn't matter that this team is twice as talented. This one is, quote unquote, personal, well, and, and these teams are gonna bring it, and that's what that was. And this game's been off for a couple of years. Now it's back on campuses, which is awesome. It yep. used to be, at I high. went in like 2013 at Mile High Stadium. It was a great, you know, the matchup was great. The rivalry was great. And, you know, neither of these teams have been world beaters since I've been alive, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so it's fun to have the rivalry and have and then get all to get the Nationals shine. It was it was awesome. Yeah. It was cool for the state of Colorado, because as a as a native, as gr growing up here, everything gets overlooked, uh, especially at, you know, under professional sports. Like if you look at like dropping it all the way down to like high school, let's say high school football, you might find a color, a kid from Colorado in the top. 500 one of one or two kids so we don't have the the shine of you know prep sports that other places have and then going into the bigger you know call it going into college going into the pros you know now we have two championship teams in the past two years the buffs are good like colorado itself is getting its shine which i i enjoy yeah but the thing i will say and the reason i was going to this is I feel like this matchup, to me, no matter how different directions they go, it needs to continue. Like, I've heard some people saying, like, oh, I don't know about the road. CU needs to add better teams to the schedule. F that, man. That was awesome. Yeah. Like, that, the intensity of that game was awesome, and that's what you want. I don't care if these two teams go in different directions, which, by the way, I'm not even so sure that... You know, again, Norvell's new there. They looked like they knew what they were doing out there. But I'm just saying, a rivalry like that is always going to make for great drama in a great game. And I wish, look, that hat, that hit on uh, uh, Travis Hunter was was the dirty hit. Dirty. He should have been thrown out, I honestly. thought right on the spot and you got to now the out. news comes out today that he'd hurt his liver. He has a liver laceration. He's going to miss a couple weeks. Like, it's horrible. So I'm, that part aside, because I think that was a big part of the game, obviously, and that was terrible. But the intensity, the rivalry, the fact that these guys were getting into it, you know, all of this, to me, it was so great. It's what you like about sports. And you almost have to take a minute back to be like, there's a difference between real hate and sports hate. And like we have, uh, you could tell how people feel about this. We have like 50 down votes or something already from these bus fans. That just tells me they actually got hurt. Like, honestly, that's hey, exactly. what that tells me yeah, is that yeah. they were actually hurt by this weekend because of how close it was. And because, you know, like we did this with like the Suns, you know, you beat the Suns, people hop in the mention to talk trash and you're like laughing about it. You only hit the down vote button when you've actually got hurt. And to me, that tells you, that's because it was a real rivalry. Uh, and that's that's my thing, is I loved that the rivalry met the stage. And I do, my one hope with it, and I get that fans are, bases are always going to talk trash, but from DNVR, because by the way, we cover Colorado sports at DNVR. Jake and Ryan cover the buffs. We don't. I do like this idea of like, I, I don't know, man. It was awesome to see the other side elevate and meet the moment because... A lot of Buff fans always go, well, is it really a rivalry? It's a big brother, little brother rivalry. Well, you rush the field after you beat them in, in overtime as huge right. favorites. So it's right. clearly a rivalry, and yep. it's good for Colorado. And if I'm a football player in the region and I haven't heard from Prime yet, yeah, I'm pretty intrigued by what Jay Norvell and his guys just did. And that It's a huge missed opportunity for CSU. Like I don't think they should be satisfied with just competing. They could have and should have won that game. But ultimately, Colorado football won on a yeah, national stage. I agree. But real quick, before we get out of here, with CU, because I, I thought it was a pretty, again, they lost Travis Hunter early, but I thought it was a pretty unimpressive game. Are you, does it change your perspective at all about the buffs? I was riding the super high. This week, it's like, all right, a little cold water. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I, it hasn't changed my perspective yet, because my perspective has stayed the same. Now, when they beat TCU, um, you know, they, they, 
let, let me get this straight for all the CU fans that are still there. CU is a great football team, and they have the talent through and through that any Division One roster has. I love they have one of the best. I yeah. think he's unbelievable. He's awesome. I love watching He's a player. Him. Like yeah. He's an absolute dog, going to be in the NFL. But they played a TCU team that was clearly overrated at 17. And then they played Nebraska, who sucks. Let's let's not. No. We can all agree on that. The whole chat can agree on that. Yeah, but they won though. I'm, people did this to the Nuggets, and I'm not going to do no, it. Like, no, they won I, the but game. I'm saying it doesn't change my perspective because Nebraska okay. sucks. And CSU, we don't really know what they are. They played one game against a ranked team and lost and pretty yeah. badly, and now played a second game against a ranked team and took them to the last minute. So you know, this it, is this is my takeaway too. See you this week. All these Buffs fans still here. If you want to believe and you want me to believe. Go into Eugene and make the game close. And by the way, or believe, win it. Pull it believe, off, baby. I do believe already in what they've done. It's the most impressive overnight turnaround we've ever seen. So I'm not like I'm rooting for CU next week. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm loving the prime experience. Yeah. It's awesome. But I do think there was a that game in a not just a rivalry sense, but a football sense. Expo like I don't want to say exposed because I think. Prime knows this as well as anyone, that there's there's levels to this and they've got a long way to go. It's still awesome, by the way, that they've opened up 3-0 and after yeah. going 1-11. and You just feel left, less confident about them beating Oregon this weekend. Like maybe, maybe four days ago, you'd be like, you know what, they're going to beat CSU, and I don't know, they may beat Oregon too. Yeah, and that's okay, by the way, that we yeah. don't know if they're going to beat Oregon. It's sick that that's even on the table because, again, I think people forget what the pregame preseason expectations were even from the optimists, even from inside this camp, yeah. it was, you know, we weren't sure how many games they were going to win. So it's still cool that we're even able to have that conversation. Um, but it was also a reminder that there are levels to this and there's a ways to go. Yeah. For me, I think uh, to echo what you were saying, Spence, I feel a little less confident in CU after that week. And I feel like CSU might be a lot better. I mean, after week one, they get smacked by Washington State. And I'm sitting there again, just following narrative. Didn't even watch the game. But I'm sitting there going like Jay Norvell last year. OK, second year you come out and get smacked right away on your home field. Maybe this guy's just another bad coach. And like, here we go again. But you watch him this game. And yes, they're 0-2. And, and I go I walk away going... You know what? I'm intrigued to follow them all year. I'm kind of I, curious to see what happens now. I think they're pretty good, and Washington State looks like a really good team. Yeah, and they so laid I, 62 over the weekend. Though. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, they beat Wisconsin. They beat a, <laughs> a decent Pac-10 or yeah. a Big Ten team. That's what it was kind of cool to me, and man. And maybe I, that's the truth of all of this: is CU is actually really good, and CSU is really good. Is actually CU pretty just good. Beat a really good team. That's cool it's too. I'm possible. happy for that. Would be I, I, because I listen, man. I, I I hope that's the case. I man. latched onto the Denver sports scene through the Nuggets, but I'm looking for ways to like get involved with every team, right? And it's been tough with CSU, but this was this was it for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're they're a real football program, real fan base, real presence in the state. Am I gonna watch every CSU game? No. If I catch them in conference play, I'm tuning in, and I think they're gonna win some games. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, we're gonna get into the Broncos. You thought we were rough on CU, which, by the way, we were. If you thought we were rough, wait till you hear us talk about the Broncos today. Uh, oh, the and two. Broncos. A little bit of a bummer. Yeah, uh, Spence, you want to start us off? Yeah, so we're going to tell you guys about the DraftKings Sportsbook. You can get into the action with DraftKings. Use that promo code DNVR at sign up. And all you do is bet $5 and you get $200 instantly in bonus bets. You can throw five down on any of this weekend's college football or NFL matchups. Um, it's always more fun when you get some, you know, some action on the game. Uh, me being a, a CU adjacent fan and watching this game, I had to have some action on it. I bet CU for the record. Um, they did I not, did too. They I did actually not lost cover. my CU bet. I had two bets. Yeah, I, I thought they were going to cover. That's really why we're mad. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I lost my, my two unit bet. But I actually have made quite a, mo a good amount of money on CU. Um, so that, that part's been awesome. But you can do that as well at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Football is always more fun when you got skin in the game. So get signed up now with the promo code DNVR. Bet $5 and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with code DNVR. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for pro uh, problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, Louisiana, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See sportsbook or draftkings.com slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. 
Game time is helping you get your butt in the seats for the best uh, events in town. And that's not that's not just sports. If you notice right now, all of our teams are going to be either not playing or on the road for a little bit. But with game time, you can get great seats to all kinds of events like the Arctic Monkeys tonight at Red Rock. Still seats available at game time where they're working to get you the best last second uh, prices. And I, I view it a bit like a, an app that brings people together. Those who want to sell tickets at the last second, those who realize at the last second, they would like to be there. All kinds of great events going on in Colorado, sports or otherwise. It's a uh, it's a real mecca for sports and entertainment. Check out the Arctic Monkeys tonight at Red Rocks and uh, do it by buying your tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app now, create an account, and use code DNVR for $20 off your first purchase. All right, segment two, the Denver Sports Podcast. And <laughs> I was going to say it again, not the Buffs Podcast, the, the, the Denver Sports Podcast. Um, equally as big of a story, actually, probably not. Actually, that's not true. A slightly smaller story from over the weekend, which is why it's segment two, the Denver Broncos, at home for the second week in a row, carried a 21-3 lead halfway through the second uh, second quarter of that game. I'm sitting there. I don't know how you guys felt, but I'm sitting there watching this game going like, all right. I overreacted week one because I was very down about them losing 17-16, but here it is. Russ is slinging that thing. He had 80-yard dime. He had some nice power, 60-yard dime. He had some nice passes. And then it was over. Then all of a sudden, the same old Broncos showed up and the Broncos get worked by the commanders. To me, this was like, I, I, I probably have said this 10 times in the last eight years, Spence. It felt like a new low. Yeah, well, it's it's already a new low considering that the this, you know, growing up in this town, the Broncos ruled all. Yeah. And now not only are they the third best professional team or third most talked about professional team in this state, they are now not even the first the most talked about football team in this state. And which yeah, is it's, crazy. I never I I would have bet my life savings that would never happen. Exactly. And it's a, it's a crazy low for them. Um, they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't, they brought it for the first half. It is just watching the game and I was there and at halftime, uh, there, there was a ton of commanders fans there, which shout out to them. I mean, I didn't think they traveled as well as they did. So I was like pretty pumped about that for them. Like I love seeing other fan bases travel well, because whenever I go somewhere, I went to a Nuggets Spurs game in like 2016. I was the only Nuggets fan the entire... I, I didn't see a single jersey. That would change now. But I respect that. I respect being the enemy. That's always fun. But they were like, yeah, we're right in this game. And I'm like, I'm thinking, what the fuck? We just scored three touchdowns on three straight drives. No, you're not. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I was obviously wrong. But um, up 21-3 to three and a fumble from Russ that I didn't think was a fumble originally. Watching it in slow-mo obviously yeah, was. Sucked. Changed the whole game. That and was that, a bad play, you got to be man. tougher mentally than to lose a 21-3 to lead after losing one fumble in momentum. Yeah. What really, really is unfortunate about it is that it seemed, for the first time, you're watching that offense and you're going, this looks like a normal football team. They can run a play. They can get a snap off. That was a downfield completion. And that's great. Except now it doesn't look like you have the defense who you're used to. And so it's like this weird kind of whack-a-mole thing where you want to say it's looked better, you want to say it's been more fun, except they're also just 0-2 and again, and it's really, really deflating. I, I wonder, just relative to expectations, because everyone is out on the Rockies, but there's an argument I think you could make that the Broncos have the least goodwill in town right now. And um, <laughs> Yeah, you can. It's the, the Rockies. Yeah. But, but I, I know, you know what I mean, though? Like it's I, You're right. That's not the right way to frame it, but they're closer to the Rockies than they well, should be. Well, here's the thing. They're closer to the Rockies than what they should be. What do the Rockies be. have that's pretty definitive that they have it? A losing culture. That's like, the they thing. just have this thing about them where it just feels like, from ownership down, that they are going nowhere. And this is the thing about the Broncos. And I thought it last year in particular with some of these bad losses where you're like, are we a losing organization now? Is this a losing? For years, the Broncos have basically been bad two or three years since 1984. Honestly, like from yep. 1984 to 2015, the Broncos were almost always in the playoffs, in Super Bowls, or clo or at least had the ad expectation going in, minus a couple little blips on the radar. Eight years now. And at some point, you lose that shine. And I'm just watching this Broncos team because that game on Sunday felt like snatching defeat from the claws of victory. Like the victory was theirs. And they're like, oh, no, we can lose this. And you sit there and go, are we becoming the Lions? 
It, it, it sort of feels like that. Like, somebody texts me today, one of my friends, and goes, why do the Broncos suck? And I was like, well, their roster is mediocre. It's you okay, know? yeah. It's a decent, they got decent weapons on offense. They got decent players on defense. But they don't know how to win football games right now. So maybe that is a losing culture that they're they're faced with, is they just straight up don't know how to win football games. They they can score 16 with a mixed, missed extra point and a missed field goal in week one and lose. Or they can score 33 and look basically unstoppable for the entire first half, uh, you know, make some turnovers, make some bad plays in the second half, and end up losing scoring 33 points. After a Hail Mary that they completed, and then, I mean... I know, can, it's only, which was actually dope. Yeah, so, actually somebody goes... One of the coolest somebody had, I, that, was, that was caught right in front of me, and one, somebody said, what are they, like, lining up to do here? And they were like, I was like, it's going to be a Hail Mary. They got one, one play left, and they were like... I, I said something to the effective, and I said, it's going to be fun. And then the second <laughs> he caught... Brandon Johnson caught the ball, I turned around, and I said, it's going to be fucking do, fun. Do you know how many times I've seen a Hail Mary succeed for my team? I think it's only CU... Against Michigan, 1996 or whatever it was. I don't know the last time I've seen a completed Hail Mary. Yeah, not it for... It pretty rare. Uh, it is super rare. And that ball just, like, floated and bounced. And I was like... It was I awesome. couldn't believe what I saw with my eyes. I am so pissed that they needed two points on that one. Because it know. was, like, such a cool thing. And I immediately went to, like, well, lightning's not going to strike twice. Well, and, and that goes back to, you know, they're, one of the things with the Broncos right now is they're... <laughs> Their margin of error is so razor thin that they can't. Tiff, it doesn't matter. They, I don't care. Let they, them, it, let them do their thing. I don't, it doesn't it's, bother it's, me. We know why it's happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, yeah, they're, they're, they didn't get, they didn't log in and get what they wanted. Um, so the, the margin of error for the Broncos is so razor thin. Like a simple play, like Alex Singleton, who's a great great linebacker, great player, friend of the program, friend of DNVR, dropped an interception, and at the time you're like. I don't give a shit. Like we're up twenty-one to three. Right, right. That, that yeah, could have changed the game. Right. The the two-point conversion that randomly they reviewed, and Brian Robinson, who also just destroyed us yesterday. Good for him. Love the dude. He he didn't like. You, there was no evidence that he scored. This would have this made it to, uh, twenty-one to eleven at the time. It was twenty-one nine. They go for two, which didn't even really make sense to me. But they go for two. They don't get it. Broncos are pumped. They're going off the field, and all of a sudden they review it, and they're like. Oh yeah, he scored, and now it's twenty-one eleven. At the same time, the same thought. Yeah. I don't care. You know, we're up ten. Our offense looks great all day, but those little plays turn into losing plays and losing you games. But it's all to me. There's a there was an inevitability factor to it, where obviously pass interference at the end, and it just to me can't even get that mad about it because I never felt like they were converting that two point conversion even after the hail mary, and this is not. This is casual analysis, not a football guy. But sometimes there is a vibe. There's a cloud hanging over the Broncos yes, experience right now. That's exactly that it. That darkened even that Hail Mary. Almost, uh, I, I, was I was happy for I like was, five, no, ten I was seconds. You're right, excited, though. My mind immediately went to like, right oh, away, shit, we I was like, they're not, nope. they're not going <laughs> to fucking convert this. Oh, they're yeah, not. 100%. And so that's kind of where I think the Lions thing comes into play. There, there's an inevitability feeling to it right now that's really tough. Yeah. And shouldn't in the eyes of the fans of this of this organization should never have happened it seems impossible from where you once were well they, but this is the thing right teams are always organizations are always rising and falling we're seeing this in the nba with the lakers kind of you know since dr bus who was a great owner and one of the maybe the single greatest owner to ever come through the nba innovator visionary all those things when he passes away it goes on to his children like some of the magic lot was left and it was disguised a little bit by lebron picking them you know, basically taking the corpse of the Lakers and zombieing them into another title inside of a Disneyland. But but for the most part, you look at the Lakers and you go, that's not, they don't have the same shine they used to have. The Cowboys, they were the team of the 90s, right? You had all this stuff. And they've had some good teams, but some of the shine's there. This happens. Teams rise and fall. No, they do. I just look at this with the Broncos and I go, they've had an ownership change, similar to what we talked about with the Lakers. They have kind of lost a little bit of that magic. And the moves they've made lately uh, have all kind of felt like that's the thing—the the crumbling empire. They don't, yes, precisely. They don't feel close or this away from much. You know, that's the thing. It, it just, it just feels like they are signed up, Spencer, for an era that is not going to be fun in the near future. No, you just don't know what you're gonna. There's no direction. You don't know what you're gonna get week to week. You've got a forty million dollar quarterback that you still. He's played, you know, I think he missed two or three games last year, so he's probably played the equivalent of a full 17-game season by now. You still don't know what he is. Right. He, in game one, he came out through two quick touchdown passes, good to go. So L last game, 
Uh, you know, he threw for 300 yards. Yes, 56 of that was on a on a Hail Mary, but threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. Looked like a competent quarterback, but you still don't know what he is, and you're paying him $40 million. Like, I got a you know an update here that Patrick Mahomes a little bit ago restructured his contract again, and that's what winning, you know, winning teams don't continue to pay a quarterback, especially an underperforming one, I'll give Patrick Mahomes $100 million a year. Right. But those teams then find ways, like the Brady ways, where then they, they can stack their whole roster. And when the Broncos used to make moves, Aqib Tlaib worked out perfectly. DeMarcus Ware worked out perfectly. TJ Ward worked out perfectly. They're signing people. This is, you know, 2013 to 15. They're signing all these players that end up, oh, wow, that was a, what a great signing. We worked that out, you know, and the Peyton Manning effect. And now they're signing guys, you know, like... I'm not totally criticizing his play because I, I have been at both Broncos games in the stadium and drinking, so I can't, like, completely analyze everybody's play and and from, like, watching it all 22. But, like, Zach Allen, big sign that they got from the Cardinals. Where is he? Has he done anything? Yeah. They paid him, like, $15 million a year. So it's just, like, not only is the quarterback not working out, which then trickles down to the whole team, but th- none of the guys they're signing are making an impact. Yeah, there's this sort of shine that an organization can have where it feels like you can't do any wrong. For right. like, The Spurs had it for a while. The Cardinals in baseball for a while. The Cardinals or the Spurs is another great one. Yeah. They kind of maybe have lost a little well, bit. Well, same with the Cardinals, dude. Yeah. They're so far. And it's it's what you were saying with the Broncos. The, the name is still there, but you look at the organization top to bottom. How many links to that era are there left? Right. Now, there's still the name John Elway, right. but it's it doesn't appear to be enough. And so it's, is this is this really a destination where things turn around and good things happen the way it once was? Or it, that shine seems to be lost. And so it does, it does feel right now like some L's are inevitable. You need somebody to come in and sort of galvanize them to, you know, in some way. And that can be the owner yeah. who's been, you or know. Or a new GM. Gonna, the, the, the ownership group is clearly going to spend a lot of money. That part is a very important part, but it's not everything. You also need the sort of like the gravitas, the leadership, the direction, all of those things. And then you need good management, which again, I think the Broncos might be in flux there. We're going to find out. I mean, this team, this season not going so well. And then you need a great coach. And I look at this and I just go, Sean Payton has rubbed a lot of surprising amount of people the wrong way in his short time here. And they're 0-2 yeah, at home. And I think that's, that's carrying over from, you know, I thought Sean Payton was the right hire. That's still... You know, to be determined. Obviously, everybody thought Josh McDaniels was the right hire after right. one six games, and it you turned out to time. be a he dumpster deserves fire. More time. And he deserves more time. And the roster isn't, you know, the roster isn't that bad when you look at all their position. Pl- but like you just said, and and I'm not in the locker room. I have like this is not a plug, but I have a fairly, I have a good source from inside the locker ah. room. They they do not have like that guy that's like I'm fucking over losing. Like, Russ is a great quarterback, and he rode some great defenses, won a Super Bowl, like, probably a Hall of Fame career. He's not sitting in the locker room banging the table. I'm fucking over losing. And nobody's doing that, it seems like, in the Broncos organization at all. Nobody's like, I'm done with this losing shit that we've been doing for two years when we were supposed to be, you know, this team, nobody thought this team, somebody maybe thought this team was a Super Bowl team. It, it's, a ver- it's borderline playoff team. You wanted them to be and, borderline and playoff. Want, I keep want, our interest to December. Correct. I wanted a game that mattered in December, and it looks like we're going to go a seventh straight year without getting it. We might it. not get one in November. No. And then there's the hope that the galvanizing move is bringing in Sean Payton, a winner, yeah. guy with all this experience. And I'd, I'm not blaming Payton simply because I don't, I'm not watching film. I'm not a football guy. I couldn't tell you why a team loses a game the way the best analysts can. But I do think the bottom line is Sean Payton said some crazy stuff about this organization and the last coaching regime on the record. Which I loved. I I was so hyped about it. I'm honestly asking because didn't the Broncos start 2-1 and last year? Well, come on. I mean, mean, although you're right, two home games against bad teams. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he was wrong about Nathaniel Hackett, but you can't say that and come out 0-2 against those two teams. I'm so bummed about my Broncos. Um, I am glad that the Buffs have replaced that because I've really enjoyed my Saturdays. I've always had Saturdays off. I've never been a college football guy. And now the Buffs have like given me something to get excited about. The so first I'm excited football for culture it. I've gotten to see since I moved to yeah. Denver. But the Broncos have always been my team, and then we're two weeks into it, and I'm just sitting there going, "Am I excited for next week's game?" I'm not. I'm not excited for it, and that is such a freaking drag. Uh, it's really tough with football too. The, the there's a the way you play one game a week. Yeah. You start zero and two, and you talk like, about it all week. You man. go, "Oh, it's a month before I can even talk." My even if they win, they got to go two weeks. Wait a two month and two. before like, I can even. Yeah, it sucks, man. But uh, you know, one week at a time. We're just down. The Broncos vibes are down, and I worry about their long term output. Um, let's take a break. On the other side, let's. Talk 
talk about Philly, the Philly launch, and what makes a great sports culture. It is it. I was about to end. So is it downvoting, hopping in a different show and downvoting it with anger because you don't understand the concept? Is right, it something is it? else? We'll get to all of that. Hey, Shady Rays is awesome because you shouldn't have to pay too much to look like you're worth a lot. That's how I feel. I like feeling comfortable, looking good, and not sweating the price when I shop with Shady Rays. Best of all, I like shopping with no risk, and I can do that with them because if I don't like my pair, I can exchange it or return it for free within 30 days. That's how I like to do my shopping. And we've got a deal for you, too. If you listen to any of these podcasts, then you know Shady Rays has given out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use code DNVR for 50% off. That's half off. Two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Shady Rays, my favorite. I uh, forgot to wear my Shady Rays on this podcast today. It would have been... Uh... Nice. <laughs> Maybe you had some uh, Block polarized ones. Yeah. <laughs> polarized ones would have been great. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys about Factor Meal Kits. I've been using Factor Meal Kits since before they were a partner of DNVR. I get my shipment every single Tuesday. They have a bunch of great meals, and they're always changing their meals. I'm not a big... Uh, I don't eat a lot of cheese and dairy, and they have... All those options for me every single week. Factor Meal Kits is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. I used to get HelloFresh, and like, I'm a mess in the kitchen. I can't like, I can't cook correctly. Like, I can't focus on more than one thing um, at a time. So cooking for me is just a disaster. So Factor, super easy. Put it in the microwave, two minutes, uh, and then it comes out. And it's like I said, there's a ton of great options. They got breakfast options, uh, smoothies, uh, a, a ton of stuff like burgers. Um, it's lunch on the go, and I bring my lunch every day to work, and it's easy when I don't have to go to Jimmy John's or go to, oh, that was a, uh, no free ads. But um, <laughs> when I get to use a factory meal kit, it just makes it easier. I don't even have to leave the office. Uh, they also have Protein Plus with 30 grams of protein per meal if you're trying to trying to gain, trying to get in the gym and gain. So use that code DNVR50 and you uh, at factormealkits.com slash DNVR50. And you're getting 50% off your first box, and then they send you a ton of discounts for boxes past that. So uh, Factor's really the way to go. It gets you your meals for all the week. You don't have to worry about lunches, dinners. If you're always on the go, Factor meal kits are the way to go. Once again, that's promo code DNVR50. Um, and I saw somebody in the chat say, is DNVR buffs not the flagship show at DNVR? No. They actually are number one on YouTube. But they're number four on podcasts. So if you want to help them out, everybody that watches the Buff Show and tunes in, um, currently they're behind Nuggets, Avs, and Broncos on podcasts. Go subscribe. Leave a five-star rating and review. If you like those guys and you support them, leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps that show get discovered and more people hop on the Buff's bandwagon. So you guys can actually help them out to become the flagship show. There you go. Um, all right. Moving on now. Let's go to we launched Philly last week, PHLY. A new market. I was out there for just a couple days, and I got to say, man, the fan base out there is insane. There was a Phillies game. Now, Phillies are in the hunt for the playoffs. Phillies game at like 11 o'clock, parking lot packed with people playing bags and tailgating and grilling and stuff on a Tuesday. That Everywhere I went, people were in gear. Like here in Denver, we have a pretty good, you know, lots of Broncos fans. Now there's a lot of, Although a lot, I think a lot of the Coach Prime fans are actually out of state. I mean, like Boulder is obviously popping. You're seeing a lot more of that. Nuggets win the title this year, the NBA championship. You see a lot more of that. It pales to what I saw in Philly. Everybody in Philly was rocking their gear. Dude, I'll piggyback on that. So we went to a tailgate for the Eagles Thursday night before the Thursday night game. There was, I saw roughly 150 to 250 people from 430 to 730. I was the only person not wearing Eagles gear. That's crazy. I was the, I, and I'm only not joking, one. the only one that didn't have green shoes or a green mohawk or an Eagles jersey or shirt. There wasn't any fans going to that game that I saw in that little area that I was in for the tailgate that didn't have an Eagles jersey on. Yeah. We went to, you know, our Broncos tailgate yesterday. Great tailgate. A lot of people that just like, you know, not necessarily in a jersey or ro rocking the team colors. It is truly an incredible sports town from top to bottom. There is a there's a crossover in the culture where supporting the team almost becomes something that's not necessarily a sports specific experience, right? So being a Phillies fan or an Eagles fan is so woven deeply into being a Philadelphian that you even come to associate some of the branding very strongly with the city and the state. I think Colorado has that with the Broncos. Now I've been here in the down, the downest baddest yeah. you've ever been. So I not that it's not as thriving. I do, even as an outsider, 
there's just so many Broncos hats everywhere. Like I do associate the Broncos logo and that orange with, with Denver. Denver. Yeah. I think you can wear Broncos gear and support the Broncos without knowing football in any way. So that's there. I will say some of these Northeastern cities in my experience have, it's like that for a lot of the sports, if not all of them. And that's what's really cool to me is it's such a, such a, a unmissable part of being a, a citizen of that city is even if you don't really know the game, it's it's go birds anyway. Right. And it's so cool, man. And I got to say, one of the things I really loved, and this actually really pertains to our chat today. One of the things I really loved was Philly has this I, this concept of the four for four, where Philly fans take a lot of pride in how much, how what a great sports town they are. They take right. a lot of pride in like, oh, we're the best fans in the world. But then they also take a pride in, I'm a diehard Eagles fan, but I'm also a huge Phillies fan. Flyers and 76ers fan. They take a lot of pride in being what they call a four for four, and it becomes a badge of honor. I would say Spence. Oh, Spence, that guy's a four for four, man. That's a real sports fan, Spence is. And by the way, Spence actually is a four for four. Sicko. Watches the Rockies every night. What, what are the, wouldn't you say you're a four for four? You're oh, all 100%. Four yeah, absolutely. I've got three of them tattooed on my arm. So. <laughs> Who's not tattooed? Uh, the Rockies. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> they have to win they a title. It. They have yeah. to win a title. That was my, that was my I goal. I love that. And they have to win a title, and once they do, they'll go on my arm. But no, I'm a true four for four, and we don't, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a, Denver's a fairly transplant city, it's but I feel like it's it. also not, a city where, you know, hopefully people jumped on the Nuggets bandwagon. I'm not a big bandwagon guy in general. Uh, I, I personally, like, I like them if they're my for my team. Obviously, I you know, I don't gatekeep who wants to be a fan of the team that's winning. Sometimes it's a little annoying. Um, but, yeah, I grew up loving the Rockies, loving the Avs, loving the Broncos, and loving the Nuggets. And it's never going to change and never will change. And so I, I respect the 4 for 4s but I don't think... It's not a thing here as much as, as it could be. You know, there's people that root for... What's crazy is, like, a lot of Broncos fans are, like, not into, you know, their other... It's, like, there's there's so many Broncos fans that are like, oh, I'm a Broncos and a Lakers fan. I feel like that's a very popular combo, oh, yeah. which is kind of sure wild to me. But, no, definitely... Um, it's a horrible combo. I'm definitely a four for four. And always, like I said, I, watch, I watched 100-plus Rockies games this year. And they're the worst team in baseball, or one of the worst teams in baseball. So I, I pride myself on that. It's cool to see. We got a couple more in the comments there, four for fours. Um, and, Who's the four for fours? I want to see. And uh, there's Proud a comment a four in there. Four. If you're a four for four with the Rockies in this Rockies era, man, like that's like super impressive. Yeah, well, and the thing for me is, is like I cheer. Like I don't – obviously, we all know Rockies ownership sucks. Nobody likes them. Right. Um, but I cheer for the players yep. in the jersey. Yeah. That's what I cheer for. Yeah. And Nolan Arenado is one of my favorite players for eight to ten years. He goes to he goes to St. Louis, and I, Nikola Jokic is the only player that I've ever watched <laughs> that if he goes somewhere else, God forbid, he won't. But if he did, I would still cheer for him and maybe cheer for that team. But he's Depends the only on person <laughs> I've ever felt that way about. Yeah. The second you're you're not in that on that roster wearing that jersey, I do not care about yeah. what you do. I think that. When it comes to a, what's really a lost kind of concept, in my eyes, really belonging to the community you're in and not just renting a zip code is an increasingly difficult thing to do. And to me, sports are the obvious avenue. Like, it's the easiest way to do that. Um, so as I seek to be closer to Denver, part of it is I don't want to just be a Nuggets fan. I, I, act, I want to have emotional, vested interest in the success of all of these teams. Uh, and... I, it's one of the original goals of DNVR that is hard to do, but to one extent, we'd love to bring everyone under the same roof. Right. Not expecting it with Boulder and Fort Collins, but I, you know. Right. That one, most people pick aside or whatever. But, uh, right. But like in this, in this city that, yeah, okay, a lot of transplants and what is the Denver culture? It's pretty malleable. We want to fight hard so that there are fewer Broncos and Lakers fans, right? There's to belong to Denver should be to have the Nuggets back in that series, not because of your basketball fandom, because you love Denver like that. And I think a lot of these great cities, and by the way, I do think Denver's one of them. Um, they have that where it's 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 so tribal in a way that I actually deeply admire and think is healthy through this channel. You should have a little bit of tribalism for yeah. your home because that means you, you take pride in it. It's like literally called civic pride, you know, supporting your, your sports teams. And But there's something to, it gives you ownership of your place. I always hate people that live in a city and talk about how much they hate the city. Because I always want to think like, 
are you making it better? You know, like I, I feel an obligation as a citizen of Denver to be like, no, this is my city. I want it to be the best it can be for sports. I want it to be for food, for all these different things. I want to support the cool things that come into my city because I take pride in it. And I do think sports are a huge part of that, a, a huge part of that thing that binds you together. That's like, hey, we're a city of a bunch of different people, but we come together to root for something. And I do think, I mean, I'm a three for four. I'll be honest. I, my favorite baseball team is the Colorado Rockies. I just don't have the energy to watch them. So that's why I'm a three for four. I don't have another team. No, that's fair. And, and baseball is the one sport where it's, it's ex especially like time consuming. And there's so yeah. many games that when your yes. team's not that good, like, yes, I watch them. Yes, I'm a sicko, but I don't expect a casual fan. Like, I, I, like somebody say, I'm a Rockies fan, but I don't expect them to watch every single game or be like the NFL. If you, I'm going to make a take here. If you're an, if you call yourself an NFL fan or a college football fan and you don't watch every single game, you're not a fan of that team. Right. I'm sorry. It's just, there's 10, 10 to 12 college football games a year. That's 36 hours. There's 17 NFL games, hopefully more. That's 51 hours. I've done, I've, told, done I've said math. this multiple this times. Isn't coming this the isn't top the, the first time I've this. ever said this, but you watch, you find the time to watch at every single game or else, you know, wedding, there's, there's some certain things here and there that just absolutely prevent you from that. I get it. But overall, if you're like, yeah, I'm a fan of that team. Oh, I haven't watched them in two weeks. No, you're not. Sorry. Yeah. And this was one of our goals, man. Like when we got together, when I, when I came over to DNVR, we launched DNVR. I remember it was one of the things we talked about with Brandon and RK and, and, uh, and Eric was we want to make Denver, like we want to bring it together. It feels so fair. At the time, there was a radio station in town that was like only Broncos is the only thing people want and almost made this like campaign to attack yeah. the other fan bases. Great timing. They're very antagonizing to Nuggets fans and mm -hmm. As fans. And we remember being like, this is dumb, man. We don't want to like fragment, divide and conquer the sports market. We want to bring together the sports market. And so for me, when I go to Chicago, which is also another great, I think sports city and then you go to Philly and see a great sports city you're like you know what Denver has a little bit of work to do here to get there and it's just kind of become my mission to again hopefully one day bus fans in the chat are not hating on every other thing that's coming out of the same company or out right, of the same precisely. state and I understand not every prime fan is going to like I mean has different allegiances that probably run a lot deeper but I'm saying my hope is that this collective thing builds community and builds this like yes. connection, connective tissue. Because I just think it's there. Also, first of all, I do think Denver is one of the great sports cities. I really do. I think what it suffers from is the obvious transplant thing. Yeah, that it's is like just, there's so many transplants. And I don't, you can't. And we're so nice. We're accommodating. This is the difference. Hang on. That's real. It's oh. real. It's real. We make you feel at home like, oh, you're a Cubs fan? Go to the Cubs bar, man. We got three of them. <laughs> this is a half big yes. self deprecating take. I'm from the Northeast, if you're in here from Philly. There is a like misery loves company. Yeah. We love to commiserate. There's there's this weird thing where in the Northeast, not everyone's happy, man. And sometimes life feels really hard and really tense and really yeah. uh and it sports becomes this insane arena for people to like let all of that out. I, and there's a there's a strange contentment in Colorado. I'm, I'm honestly gonna do this. People are happy, and I honestly yeah. I honestly wonder if that eats into some of the intensity of the attachment to the sports. Right. Where like I know so many people whose entire day was like so contingent upon how that team played. Right. And there are people who live in this state that are like, hey, I'm just here for the fishing, man. Yeah, you know? it's like the sun's They're, so nice. But I mostly so think nice. it's the transplant thing. But this city has all the ingredients. You need downtown stadiums. The Rockies thing is such a shame because I'm a baseball fan and appreciator. And if you're in that stadium on a sunny Saturday, you're like, dude, this should be one of the destinations. This yeah. should be a, a diamond of the league. And it's such a shame that we all know why it's not, but it's such a shame that it isn't. Well, let's do this to get us out of here. Just to give everybody a little appetizer, let's run through the four teams and talk about what it is that you should be interested in for each of them. And I'm going to need to, I'll, I've covered Nuggets here, you know, so does vote. I'll start with Nuggets. They're the NBA champs. This one's really easy. They're the NBA champs. They have a two time MVP who is as fun to watch. He has solved the game of basketball. He has played the game in expert mode and beat it with his eyes closed. The guy is unbelievable to watch. He does something every single game that makes you laugh. He's the only player I've ever watched. Him and Steph Curry are the two players that I've ever watched that made me giggle when I'm watching the game. Um, it's must-see TV every night, and I just feel I've never felt confident as a Nuggets fan until now. And watching Yoke, I'm like, we're going to win every time we step on the court. What was cooler, you guys know and I don't, than watching the Elway thing unfold 
it's like that. Yeah. The Nuggets have never been to the finals. And we're talking about one of probably the 10 best players ever. I really think so. And I honestly think that might be conservative when it's all said and done. So it, it is kind of like, don't miss the next Elway, you know, yeah. I'm risk of overstating it. No. And, and I, when we talked about, you know, the fandom and the four for fours and the real true diehard fan base, obviously I, I think to like what it's going to be in 20 years when the kids that are five and six now that grew up and have seen a, an avalanche and nuggets title within two years of each other, how deep the fan base is going to go in 20 years from now. Um, where, you know, kids, like, as much as we can all say it doesn't, you know, there's a fan, like, there's a fan base that loves their team no matter what, but winning makes it easy to love your team. And watching the Nuggets win a title, you know, the kids that are 8, 9, 10 now that got to see that run, and then kids that, you know, got to see the Avs win a title, like, maybe that grows into a, a, a deeper fan base 20 years down the road. Yeah. Um, talking about the Broncos and, and where we can, you know, what we can look for from them, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't. I'm not out on Russ. Like the dude still really? won a Super Bowl. I'm not out on him. I'm True the jury. The jury's He's like still such out. A four for four. Dude. Um, but I, you know, he could he could turn it around. Whether it's this year, next year. Uh, I will say the injury th the injury bug kills them every year. Yeah. I, there's no fix to that. It's yeah. just an unfortunate scenario of what's going on right now. Um, but you know, hopefully. Like moving into, I do think Sean Payton will write the ship. So I think I think I'm gonna hitch my hitch my wagon to him as one thing that you can look forward to is like. This guy doesn't fuck around. He's one in the NFL. He knows what he's doing. And it's just similar to, you know, other than Prime's buffs, like it takes time to turn shit around right. in most sports. Like it, right. he's done something that's unprecedented. But most other sports, college, pro, whatever, you can't just come in and flip a roster and be good. Like yeah. it takes time. Do you have something or no? Uh, uh, <laughs> baby, save it. <laughs> How about CSU? They played pretty well in that game. There's something hey, interesting in, going on. I, I, I'm in on that new QB. I thought he had I a freaking laser of that touchdown wide receiver there. You, um, and this is Jay Norville. To your point about it taking a year, bad year last year. This year, you know, we'll see what happens with them. Yeah, so, so they're not number one on my list, yeah. but they weren't on my list at all. They weren't on. And at what all. that game changed for me is they yeah. actually kind of are on my list. I mean, I think the buffs. It's easy. I mean, everything about them right I mean, now is exciting. Easiest, I mean, which, by like, the way, I'm loving and enjoying yeah. for like the tenth time. Yeah. But, um, the prime stuff is is unbelievable. Shadur is the real deal. Travis Hunter is like spectacular. He's I'm so one much. Pit. What, Dylan for, Edwards is like unbelievably shifty. Man, that guy is so fast. I, I'm so mad. Travis Hunter is missing three weeks. I really I am. I just want to watch that guy play. Yeah. Um, the uh, the first game Travis Hunter played, I was watching with my wife, and she goes. I didn't know, like, in college that they play both ways. And I said, <laughs> they, they don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> I said, this guy's an alien. This guy is something that we've never seen before. And yeah. uh, an interesting comment during the games that somebody said that I didn't even think about, like, yeah, they lost Travis Hunter on an offensive play, but that's like losing two players. Right. They're losing, you're losing an uh, uh, all-world receiver at the college level and an all-world cornerback. Right. Right. He's must-see TV. And then, look, the abs are... So go abs, yeah. Fresh, what, what's the sell? Well, they just won the title two years ago. Right. So it's a bit of a down right now, but they have two of their best players. I was going to say there's an even better sell, man. There, they, there's a Well, there's an upswing to come, but they have two of their best players ever in a very storied organization, by the way. Um, Kale McCarr, who is maybe a, a kind of like a Jokic type. And he is. Keep, keep an eye on how he's changing how we think of the game and positions. And from a casual perspective, I don't know hockey at all. It overlaps with the NBA season, so I don't follow I watched that playoff run, electric. It's not just that they're good, they're fun. They're it's unbelievably a, they're fun. They're unbelievable. I think Jokic is the most fun player in Denver sports right now. I think Kale McCarr is probably number two in terms of like, do I get my money's worth every time? The Buffs collectively, I don't know if there's like a... I mean, Shadour is pretty exciting for me to watch. He's so unbelievable. He might be number three for me, but... I mean, right now, Broncos and everything else is a little tough. And then the last sell is Rockies. This is the toughest one. Uh, give it to me. I got it. I, of course, let's you go didn't think space. I was going to get it. <laughs> let's I, go. He didn't right. think I was going to do All this right. myself. Hot take. Let's, let's save this. Rockies make the playoffs in 2025. All right, it's their, two years. They their, got one core, more. their core right now, Nolan Jones is a special player. He seems like Ezekiel he's Tovar is a special player. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers is yeah. a special player. They have quite a few special players. So they have three now, special players, they, you think? They, uh, I think more is it in that order? Hunter Goodman's a special player. Brenton Doyle. Like, their, their core of young players. What kind of guys are they? Are they, are they bombers? Like, what is it? Are like, they base hitters? Okay, so like, Brenton Doyle can't hit, but he is a five-tool defensive player. Okay. They, they have two of the best defensive outfielders in the entire game right now, and they're okay. both rookies. 
All right. They, they, Ezekiel Tovar might win the Gold Glove, might also win the Rookie of the Year at shortstop, but he plays for the Rockies, so we know how that goes. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers won a Gold Glove last year at second base. They need to find a first baseman. Hunter Goodman may be that guy. They've got an all-star catcher who won the all-star game. So whatever NL team, MVP, maybe the right. Phillies, yeah. makes the World Series this year, they they can thank Elias Diaz for giving them home field advantage in the World Series wow, that was because a of what he did. galaxy brain. Well done. <laughs> well done. Well done. No, but I'm serious. Like, it, And the Rockies finally, this is the year that the Rockies got out of playing the old shitty players. You know, Chris Bryant's, the, they let Jerks and Profar go. They paid these guys to put butts in the seats. Now the younger players are doing that. If you pay enough attention, these younger players are doing that. And that's what you do in baseball. You you can buy, look at look at the San Diego Padres. They tried to buy a baseball team. They suck just as bad as we do. They're not making the playoffs. The, you know, you can't do it in every sport. Like it doesn't always work out trying to buy a team. And so the Colorado Rockies core is special. They need to find some pitching. They need to get, you know, Herman Marquez healthy. Kyle Freeland needs to be better. They, they got some things to work through pitching wise, but their defensive lineup and offensive lineup, other than the pitching, is a pretty special core of, of young under 25 players. Nolan Jones and Tovar in particular are intriguing to me. And Nolan Jones has the, the fastest recorded outfield assist ever. Ever and baseball has been recording stats since like <laughs> our great great grandparents were a lot. You know, it's crazy. There, there's some special kids on that team, and it's one of the great stadiums in all of baseball. And we hate that that's been the only calling card for so long. But if there's pipeline talent, this city is starving to go to Rockies games. You yeah. can't convince me otherwise. That's so true. All right, that does it for our show today, guys. Four for fours. I'm telling you. That's real sports fans. Try to mold yourself into a four for four. I'm going to be bringing this up a lot uh, here at DNVR over the next couple of years because I just want to I want to make everybody four for fours. To all the Buffs fans that didn't go Buffs, go Buffs. Uh, to everybody else, hit that like button on the way out. We'll see you guys tomorrow.